Round three of the 2024-2025 BKT United Rugby Championships is in the books. And what a round it proved to be. From tight defensive tussles to all out attacking matchups, the league once again proved to be a one-stop shop for non-stop rugby action. Getting underway on Friday evening, two matches in Wales. Reigning champions Glasgow travelled to Cardiff for an incredible matchup between two teams who decided they were not going to defend at all. In the end, the Warriors would run out 52 to 36 victors in what was a really impressive and enjoyable match for the neutral. Probably less so for both teams' defensive coaches who will be pulling their hair out if they have any left from that weekend's performance. Speaking post-match, Glasgow Warriors centre Sione Tuipiloto looked less than impressed with his team's defensive effort, albeit he was pretty happy with the attacking showdown. Stealing the show for the Warriors was winger Kyle Rowe, who scored two brilliant tries showing his footballing ability in particular for one of those efforts. For Cardiff, uh, fly half Callum Sheedy was once again very impressive, as was fullback Cameron Winnett, who scored a superb try of his own. Those two seem to be forming a really nice playmaking axis. Inside of those pairing, the centre combination of Ben Thomas and Mace Grady really looks to be betting in for Cardiff, and that was an impressive showing for those two on that front. From Cardiff, we travel over to Parky Scarlets, where the Scarlets were hosting Irish side Connacht. What was a really interesting clash of two teams who each won a half of the match. Unfortunately for the Scarlets, they would win the second half, but not by quite enough to reel in Connacht, who came out swinging early in the first half, scoring three tries through Pierce O'Connor, Mac Hansen, and the ultra impressive scrum half that is Ben Murphy, who scored yet another try in this young season. For the Scarlets, uh, scrum half Gareth Davis scored two tries for his team to bring them right back into the contest, whilst fly half Sam Costello managed the action really well and chipped away at the lead from the kicking team. As discussed, it wouldn't be quite enough as they would slip to a 25 to 24 loss as they keep searching for that first victory of the season. Whilst Connacht, on the other hand, now have two wins and two losing bonus points from the opening game to sit nice and pr pretty in third position on the combined log heading into round four. From there, we travel to our first match on Saturday morning, which took place in Johannesburg, Saturday afternoon rather, in Johannesburg, where the Lions were hosting Edinburgh in what would be a really interesting match between two teams on very different trajectories. Edinburgh continued their nosedive as they were absolutely annihilated by the Lions, with winger Rabs McSwane scoring three tries for the home side in what is a brilliant performance from the 29-year-old, who coming into the season many would have described as a bit of a journeyman, but who now looks to have really found his home in Johannesburg. Going across the high felt to Pretoria, where the Bulls put on a masterclass against Ulster, albeit the score looked a lot closer in the end with Ulster scoring three tries of their own. One in particular from Jacob Stockdale was like rewinding the clock to 2018 with the winger scoring a brilliant chip and trace individual try to get his team back into the contest. For the Bulls, Cameron Hanekom was hugely impressive at number eight, as was Elric Lowe in the number seven shirt. But winger Kurtley Aronsa once again stole the show with a brilliant try where he parked the agility and instead hit the power button and barged over Ulster. Other notable performances for the Bulls include centre Kanan Moody, who shifted back to that outside position, having played on the wing last week. Moody really looks to be the real deal at the number 13 shirt and feels to be the long-term option for South African rugby, the Springboks in particular in that position with Jesse Creel and Lucanio Am both entering those post 30 years whereas Moody looks to be really really comfortable in that 13 shirt so if he keeps putting in performances like this where he scored yet another try he could well find himself as the first choice for the Springboks in that position. Travelling back to the Northern Hemisphere where another South African team would pick up a win as the Sharks broke the Dragons hearts in the final minute of action in Newport Burrowing their way for a close range try to seal the deal, the Sharks would close out what was a very tetchy affair between the two sides which neither side could really gather control of. In the end, the Sharks would be deserved winners it could be said, as the Dragons just simply didn't have the control to close out the win. But for the Dragons, they continue to show that they are a progressing side and have plenty of talent, albeit they would be very disappointed to have slipped up at home for what felt like a really winnable match for them. For the Sharks, it was a good win to uh, follow up a very disappointing loss for them in round two to Connacht in a match that they had control of in that one too. So it's been a positive tour for them so far given they are still missing many of their frontline Springbok stars, namely Oxnice in the front row, Sia Khaleesi in the back row, Ibn Etzebeth, 
Lucanuan, Makazoli, Mapimpi, we can go on. Afeli, Fassi, they are missing so much talent. So to get a win on tour ahead of their next tour match against Benetton, that was a real feather in the cap for the men from Durban. Speaking of Benetton, they would be in search of their first victory of the season as they welcomed a near full strength Leinster to town, which is not really what you want when you're searching for a first victory. And so it would prove as Leinster absolutely blitzed Benetton in the first 26 minutes, securing their four try bonus point as Kieran Frawley finished off what will likely be one of the try of the season contenders when it's all said and done, going coast to coast for a superb effort. For Frawley, it was a great performance as he got his first crack at the number 10 shirt for this season, which many feel will be his shirt this year as Leinster look to finally nail another Champions Cup and hopefully a first ever URC title for Leinster fans um, with Crawley taking the place of Ross Byrne and really doing a good job in that number 10 shirt. Staying in Italy, Zebre would be looking to get a second upset win of the season in a row as they ch chase down season one champions, the DHL Stormers, in what would be an interesting match between two sides in very different veins of form. For the Stormers, they came into this clash a bit uncertain of themselves, having been thumped by Ospreys. However, they would be very pragmatic against Zebre and build the score through fly half Mati, who slaughtered some fantastic kicks to build up that scoreboard before they started releasing their outside backs, namely Leyland Zass, who scored a brilliant try for his team as the Stormers secured their first victory of the season in very impressive fashion, showing that they could win in multiple different ways. Similar to the Sharks, they are still waiting to welcome back many of their frontline Springboks and will only get better as the season goes on. Closing out the round, Munster Rugby, who were on the receiving end of that shock against Zebre in round two, shored up their defense following what was an abysmal showing defensively in the opening two rounds, conceding a huge amount of tries. This time, they wouldn't even concede a single point against the Ospreys as they secured a bonus point win in biblical conditions in Cork, with the rain coming down sideways and the wind absolutely howling. Um, for Munster, it was a good performance, a very good performance, albeit it came at a cost as they got even more key injuries once again this week with uh, former captain Peter Omani looking to have gone down. Uh, he was replaced by Gavin Coombs, but that's a real knock ahead of a big matchup against Leinster at a sold out Croke Park next weekend. Other injuries include Mike Haley, who went down, which is an equally big bow in the back three, where Munster have been hit pretty heavily already this season with Shane Daly, Fakir Abrams, and Dermot Kilgallen all unavailable for that fixture due to injury. So a bit of a headache for Graham Rountree and his coaching staff ahead of what is arguably their biggest test of the season uh, against Leinster in Croke Park. Roundtree will be fronting the media tomorrow and we will have more updates on that news front, so stay tuned to Flow Rugby for that. For all of your URC action, check out our subscription packages where we also have the top 14, Super Rugby and the Rugby Championship, as well as some top-notch internationals throughout the year. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe, leave a like and a comment. All of your feedback is heavily valued, so thank you for checking out this video and we really hope you enjoyed this recap.